اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على النبي محمد وآل محمد سيد الرجال المفنى يا محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In this video we will review various wonders of the Quran showing some of its linguistic features to non-Arabs and to the majority of contemporary Arabs lacking the necessary proficiency in order to readily detect these marvels. We will review number one the literary composition in general literary superiority, correlation of the surahs, rhyme structuring, and phonetic mastery. Number two, word counts. Number three, sciences. Astronomy, embryology, civil engineering, etc. Number four, precision of terms, which applies to sciences and other subjects. Number five, prophecies and promises fulfilled and this will be performed through several videos insha'Allah the normal miracles of the Prophet peace be upon him were observable by his companions who witnessed them themselves firsthand but what about the remainder of his nation in the following centuries regardless of the authenticity of these miracles he said peace be upon him there is not one among the prophets but who was given signs, due to which people believed. But what I was given is a revelation from Allah, and I therefore hope to have the most followers on the day of resurrection. Bukhari, Muslim, and Ahmad. Therefore, our aim from this series of videos is to help feel this sign and witness it for ourselves. The Quran first challenged mankind to produce a book like it. Then the challenge was reduced to produce 10 surahs like it. Then the challenge was reduced to produce one surah like it. And we will see. Please note that since this book also includes scientific, numerological, and other wonders, as we will discuss, the linguistic inimitability is further emphasized Combining all these wonders simultaneously, a popular saying goes, I cannot carry two watermelons, but give me ten, I can carry them. So in order to meet the challenge, mankind must produce a work containing not only linguistic wonders, not only scientific coincidences, Upon coincidences, not only numerological coincidences, upon coincidences, not only prophecies of the past and to the future, not only a complete system of law, not only comprehensive moral guidance that completely changed the lives almost overnight, and continues to affect the lives of billions of people, miraculously indeed. No other revelation, no revolution, changed people so comprehensively, from how to wake up, how to conduct every instant of one's day, till how to lie down to sleep. And, not only the single edition, single edition oral composition across 20 years. In order to feel that, notice that when you send an email, you push the button send, that's it. You cannot change it. That's the oral composition and dictation of the Prophet ﷺ. Yes, there were abrogated verses, ayahs of the Qur'an. 
meaning taken out. But across the two decades of its revelation, not one single word was replaced to improve the Qur'an's literary form to a better, stronger sentence somewhere. Imagine yourself trying to dictate a book orally across 20 years, giving one edition only, without ever exchanging one word with a better one the next day or the next hour. On the contrary, the more we review the Qur'an, the more we find wonders in it. But the more we review our own works, the more we find improvements that need to be made. I just found one here. I found one mistake while reading. After having proofread it, proofread it, proofread it so many times. And we've had first-hand experience with this exhausting burden while making all our videos. Yes, in order to respond to the challenge, mankind must produce a work containing all these wonders grouped together. We cannot emphasize enough that the conglomeration of all these wonders in the same book further enhances the literary aspect, which is the topic of this video. It's showing the literary aspect to non-Arabs and to Arabs who do not have the proficiency. One may try to produce some of the above features partially, but cannot group them all within one single work of superior literary value. This indeed is the point behind the challenge and the emphasis of this video. An Arab Bedouin heard the ayah commanding the Prophet so proclaim loudly, Fasda, so proclaim loudly that which you are commanded. 1594. The verb Fasda used in this ayah is derived from Sada, which is the fissure, the crack. Al Alusi related that the Bedouin prostrated to the ground and said, I prostrated for the eloquence of this speech. By the way, no other Arab was related ever to prostrate for the eloquence of somebody else's speech. The primary interest and proficiency of Arabs was literature. One can compare the literary mastery of Shakespeare to some poets of the seven Mu'allaqat, the hanging poems, so famous among Arabs and proclaimed as the best of their poems. So they used to select and then hang it near the Kaaba before Islam. And we have seven or eleven Mu'allaqat. One compare the literary mastery of Shakespeare to some of these Mu'allaqat. Yet the same Arabs intuitively perceive the inimitability of the Qur'an, inimitability, and accepted it of divine origin, recognizing their inability to emulate it. There was no competition possible anymore. No competition. As we will see, they accepted the divine origin based on the inimitability and they did not have available to them the superb wonders that we're going to see. So let us start our review while keeping in mind the existence of all the following wonders in the same book. <laughs> 